Object for holding a batch of data with mask during training. So this is basically the same like target to the end, right? Inside this like batch in it. The batch part confuses me. Yeah, so this is So the batch is like we're doing a bunch of single like examples in parallel. Right. What is this unsqueeze? Um, unsqueeze adds a dimension of one oh. somewhere. Unsqueeze negative two. So that's like from the second to last index, we're going to insert a dimension to this matrix of one. Why do you normally do that? Um, you might do that to control how things are broadcast. NumPy broadcasting is this really confusing concept that allows matrix multiplication in like surprising magical ways. Um, basically, the idea is if you wanted to multiply like a four by four matrix by like yeah NumPy broadcasting. How many NumPy? Oh, NumPy trades arrays. Okay. Right. So when you multiply an array of three things by two, yeah. What happens? NumPy multiplies the whole thing by two, so you end right. up with two, four, six. Right. Mm -hmm. That's sort of a convenient, nice feature. The way it actually implements that has implications to like multi-dimensional multiplication as well. Right. This feature is called broadcasting, and it's used everywhere in NumPy. Um, and if you don't understand it, then it's going to really bite you. Um, so here we have an image, and you want to scale it. Yeah. And the result is the same. Yeah, because if you want to buy by three, just it just increases every right. pixel by. Ah, right. The yeah. result is those dimensions. Yeah. yeah. Well, you think right. it's like crazier when you have like you're multiplying by non-scalar. Right, so look at this one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so what does the unsqueezing thing do? It just makes it you makes NumPy like be able to multiply it. Um, uh, Shape a dot unsqueeze negative one. Or numpy dot unsqueeze. Maybe it's a torch name. Torch unsqueeze. It's not numpy. It it's it it's have a expand dims is the similar concept of numpy. Yeah. Just try to numpy. Yeah. It basically, just allows you to broadcast. See, yeah. So I made the last dimension of this one. Make so it now the bigger. dimensions are four one. Got it. Okay. Right. Which is very different than a. Right. So in torch, it's the same concept. Let me show you. Do I have to do tensor? Okay, that unsqueeze. Yeah. Okay. Is 
the trivial examples are fine. It's, it's the ones that were like you have unsqueezed negative two with like you know three or four dimensional. So what do you think this is going to do? All right. Uh, What's the shape? Eight un unsqueezed negative one to unsqueezed negative two. So if you the shape the shape is one by three to start, and then it's one by three by one afterwards, and then negative two. It's Yeah, I don't know. I have no like good intuition for that. All right, what about this? That should do nothing. That's going to be zero. Or is that just add? Or... I think this is one by three by one. Yeah. So negative one sticks a new dimension at the last place. When you say so new dimension, so if it's like if it's like one by three, it will insert a new dimension. Like you, you insert the new dimension wherever the index ends up. But negative indexing is confusing because yeah, you're end, you're at, you have to add one to figure out where the dimension is eventually going to end up because you're like you have okay. so after the unsqueeze operation you have n plus one dimensions. Saying I want to stick a new dimension at the very end yeah. is minus one. So, Saying I want to stick a new dimension one from the end yeah. is okay, minus one. Okay, I get that. So I get I get that you want to do this so you can like make it close by probably right. But doesn't that change like the information. <clears throat> this is like still like. What are we doing an unsqueeze on here? Yeah. So what is source? That's the um what we're training on, right? And the so source will be. Source like the example that we'll that we're training on, right? Is it possible to do like? How do you do torch? ones like or I think you do ones and you pass a shape. Oops. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so Okay. Oh. Interesting. Okay, so um what what are what are the dimensions of our uh, source here? We have an image. It's got a certain number of pix like pixel values for image uh, for the image. We, we have an image of pixels, and then there's a batch. Right. So how big is a batch? It's just like so. Batch is going to be just. Or is it literally just like a one by like what's the array that I like matrix that represents like the part of the picture? I guess. I mean, this is fourteen by fourteen, right? Okay. But we flatten it. To, uh, so we'll flatten it to like is. a one by something. <laughs> so, like let's say that we have five images in the batch. Okay. But I don't know if that's right. Also, I don't know if you need a one back here. So this would be a batch of like very flat. But it could also be like this. I, the 196 looks more right. For some reason, <laughs> like I've seen it. Yeah, Tom has an assert in his utils package that's like, make sure this is 196. Make sure shape is 196. Oh, also I forgot that, uh, wait, where did OBS? Oh, I forgot that the camera is up here in the top right. <laughs> yeah. Don't do anything important up there. Sorry to all of our devoted fans. <laughs> we should actually just block out this part of the screen. With like post-its, so that we are always see, reminded. Yeah. That's how you do it. <laughs> anyway, um, so let's say that we have this. Okay. If we unsqueeze two, well then that's or minus two, then it's going to go in the middle there. Five one one ninety six. What does that accomplish? Whoa. What's that shape? Yeah. And what does that accomplish? Yeah. What's what's point of that? <laughs> I don't know. This is what I was confused about. Seems like it just what? So every picked image is now like in an array of one. Seems not very useful. Also, another question: Why would you want to flatten it, not keep it fourteen by fourteen? Um, maybe it's already confusing enough to work with this many different dimensions, and if you had to do so, like. But like if the representation of it is still like about right. I mean, so, sometimes you flatten images if you want to put them through like a like a dense net, right? If you want to put them through like linear layers. Like you, you, if you want to like go over a 14 by 14 net, you have to use a comnet. If you like flatten it, you can put it through like a regular comnet. 
Yeah, uh, I don't know if that's that sounds that sounds right. That sounds right. So for training purposes, like it's faster. Like, you just can't do it. Like the shapes don't line up. Like we just have uh, a linear layer. It is. It's expecting a size. It's expecting a, a size of one by n or whatever. Okay. Uh, wait, I'm gonna get to post this thing. So it's about here. No, it's about here. Wow, that's pretty tiny. Anyway. He unsqueezes it twice, though. Why? He unsqueezes it, he unsqueezes, like, the mask before it, right? Before it, like, look here. He does this thing. Not unclear what the fuck it's doing. So now this is the source with the mask. Is that what he's trying to wait, say? Wait, you do a source. Wait, so he gets an array of booleans here, right? Uh, so trying to pad that gives you a bunch of like zeros or ones. Right. He does the unsqueeze, and then what is the second unsqueeze? When he does make standard mask, which is calling here. So why do you do that? Here's a mask to hide padding in the future. Target size to pad. I'm not entirely sure. I definitely find this type of code hard to follow. Like, you have to keep track of like the dimensions in your head and like the, all the transformations. Yeah, I think there's easier ways to work through this kind of stuff. Like, we should be printing things out. You, you, have, you have to print out shape, you have to like, kind of like walk through it like that. Yeah. But it's kind of a bummer that like, it, it's hard to gain intuition for yeah. it. Yeah, so like ago. in the Illustrator Transformer that we read last week, literally all he says about masking is, this is done by masking future positions by sending them to negative infinity before you soft max. That's it. He also, like, he was trying to get the main points of the paper. Yeah, so yeah. But that's what I'm saying, like, what, what is like, this just seems like a lot more complicated if the whole idea is that you just want to be like, hiding the information after this point, right? It's not crazy to think that this is just overcomplicated. That certainly happens. I think this is like a fancy matrixy way to do the same thing that you and Tom did. Okay. I mean, like, if you have all the keys in the same matrix, right, you can use try you and in one fell swoop do everything in one yeah. triangle, which is pretty fancy. <laughs> it's certainly a lot faster in a real training environment than, like, masking things out one at a time in the for yeah. loop in Python. <laughs> yeah. But for understanding purposes, it might make more sense. Yeah. If I get this post its right. The setup is much better. I have no idea if I'm doing it right. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Let's see. <laughs> Okay. It's like the net, the net that we're working with in this file. Sorry, which file? Uh, the one that you're in right now. Do you want to paste the net that we're working yeah, with? Yeah, because the one that we have up top is just some random comp net or something that is not relevant to this. Well, we're in comp train, which is probably in generative train or attention train. Which one were we doing last time? Was that attention train? And do we want to be in generative train? I think probably generative train. Generation. Okay, so let's try and run this and then like predict outputs and print outputs maybe. Mask got some compositions. So this is not being used. It's probably good because it feels like the answer. <laughs> Okay, here we are, and our to-dos.
change the output to be a pixel rather than the class. So I want to I want to see like one image go through all of this and then output some kind of prediction and then change that to a pixel. So here we are in main. My blue base is being really fucking weird. Really? No. Is it not following him? No, it just keeps. It, I think you have to follow him, like, if you, in the chat part, yeah. I am. Have you turned off um, any settings in PyCharm that are like, um, every time you save, white space is deleted? I don't have that. I don't think. So. Uh, and then it's like test views file. Okay, so this is what you want to turn off, Tina. Strip trailing spaces on save should be none. Right here. This causes a lot of problems with flu bits. If you have a similar setting. I, mean, I don't even have PyCharm. I'm doing like the online version of this. Okay. But none. I should have in PyCharm at some point. No, okay, good. I turned it off. Yeah, PyCharm is great. Okay, but I'm still in this weird ass file called test fees. Well, you can just switch over to. But I just want to follow you. Alright, whatever, it's fine. It's weird because it keeps jumping me to that file thinking that you're there. Huh. Alright, I'm gonna stop following you. Alright, it's fine. All right, okay, continue. cool. Um, so, when we run Python PyTorch generative train. We're going to hope that this works. Okay, good. Um, now, can we make it just like a single thing? Can we like simplify this a lot? Epics. Let's make that. Let's make this from one to one. Yeah. First of all, Range, just range of one to one. Just want to like a lot of the stuff is working, right? So would it make sense even to like print out like? Okay, well I'm sure you wanted to. <laughs> print out shapes and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. like what's the batch shape look like? What's... Yeah. Um, okay, so if we just did train and then test for one. Oh, I guess I got to do our same way. Yeah. Did that work? Didn't look like it. Can you guys look up the correct invocation of rsync for this? Do you want me to rsync your whole directory or? Yeah, I want to rsync the every every changed file. In from where to where? From here, every Python file in my current directory up to I'm pretty sure this is the right spot. Oh, you mean the, the box? Yeah. Like every time you save? Um, yeah, ideally it would like stay syncing. I mean, would you just um, are syncing a wall loop or something? Yeah, like a watch or something. Yeah. But for some reason, even it's though PyTorch like generator train has changed, if I do cat. PyTorch to the same So you're running this locally, but your internals in the in the machine. So is that is that why? Uh, I'm running this on the machine, but I'm writing it locally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we gotta update. We gotta send it to the machine before we run it. <laughs> That'll be done. Oh, actually, no, it worked. Look. Oh yeah. Yeah, it did work. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't good. have a thing for watching, but I just have a thing for syncing every time. Cool. Okay, so now we're doing it for one epic. Now how do we do it so that it does like one example and then stops? Within the batch train. Train? Yeah, okay. So 
can't we just garbage bar train loader what is a train loader does it just load the data it's a thing that has land <laughs> <laughs> this is like a very is untyped file this, like data set so why don't you go through and type this these uh, files as well train oh. loader is like some kind of data loader thing for pytorch that like spits out a bunch of stuff yeah, this is progress bar. That's a weird way to. Yeah, this is very strange. So it creates data loaders, which literally just gets the MNIST data set, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what yeah, I noticed that there's like a lot of no types and like yeah, it's just researching. generally like in uh, like. Or like a lot of not not just this code, but like in everyone's example of code that I find online. Yeah, where are the types at? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> There's one guy that I really Does like. no one use PyCharm? I love his code, but his, I'm just like, what are you? You're killing me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Test act. Is it not that normal still that people are like not using types? Yeah. Yeah, I never used types in my last job. I didn't know they existed until I came here. Oh. You guys were using Python? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I used Go in my last place, so I really like Really? That's sick. Strict, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. Is Go a good language? Yeah, it's really cool. There's a lot of things that are built into it. Um, like channels are like a thing built into it. And it's like not like Python in the sense that like there's tech, like a thousand different ways you could do something and it's like really clever. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's like there's one way you should write it, just write it this way. And that's it. <laughs> it's a little bit can be a little bit more verbose because of that, but like it's really clear what's happening. Um, my last good interview guy did oh, yeah, he's used good. Go. It was the first time I'd ever seen Go written for real. It's really cool. Uh, it's like um, similarly low level, right? Like you're using manual memory management? Yeah, so it's uh, like in, up until recent, like there was, on, I cool. guess it was a couple years ago. A couple years ago they just added garbage collection. So you have to garbage collection. Oh. <laughs> But it's like a thing you can enable or disable? I think you can disable it, but now people mostly just use a built-in one. But like the idea was like, yeah, you should like be able to decide and like have that wow. much control over like your language. It's cool. It's a like really cool good team from Google that like built it out and like our so pet project. I think if I was gonna learn something along those lines, like that kind of language, I would learn Rust. Yeah. What is it doing? Is it training another epic? Well, it should be stopping grades. I think equals one. Yeah, there That's we go. One. Stop. There we go. Okay. So I think within this step, right? If you want to stop. Yeah, we could do, really just do. We could turn off TQDM. We could do. You know, list of this. Do like. Zero. Or like, should still be like that. Couldn't you also just like literally? So it did. Maybe nothing. No, it should have done the first element. I, I think it did something. Did you stop it yourself then? Mm -hmm. I just did one training example, and then I don't really want to do test. I think that's fine. Oh, whoops. What size is this screen? It's so big. Oh, I didn't R-Sync. I would love to be able to automatically R-Sync. So there should be one train example and then no test. But instead of doing this, whatever that is. What is it? I don't know. Okay, so it, 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 did something, it does something before you even hit that, right? Because it, it broke on the line you fixed. Okay, so let me take a look here. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so it's, it's training. It must be printing out something from the train model of train update, right? I don't know what this oh, is. Oh, yeah. I, I know what happened. Uh, 
course that it was a TQDN thing. Yeah. Here. But really we just want the numerator train letter. Like that. Postfix. Just going to oops. F three. And then that. Uh, this batch index is never used anywhere. We can just use X like so. Hmm. Okay, well, it didn't really print it, but I'm sure we did one, I think we did one training example, and then all of this business, whatever that is. Did load not subscribe, well, fine. We don't list. Do you guys see what I'm trying to do? I'm just trying to do one example, right? Yeah. <laughs> X masked. Why? I just have no idea what any of this stuff is. <laughs> Isn't X masked literally not even your training example with the mask? Yeah, so that's what I want to see. And the Y should still be the thing that's correct, right? No, what's the Y? Y should be maybe the. Let's see. Y view as pred. Pred output max. Correct. I would have guessed that, yeah, so Y is the label, because we're going to do the net loss between okay. output yeah. and Y, right? So this is just like measuring the difference between output and Y. Yes. I know what I should do. I'm going to run these things. So, oops. No, mod no module found name transformer. So normally what I'd be able to do in this setup is like uh, execute all of these lines one by one in my console, or like execute my whole selection in a console. Mm -hmm. And then I'd be able to like highlight this and run it here, and I'd be able to like inspect it. In what setup? This is my PyCharm console. I see. And so whenever I highlight things, I can do execute selection in console, and then you can like examine things, manipulate them. But you can't put a debugger in because it's running in your ML box. Uh, it doesn't need a debugger. It's just executing the lines one at a time and then building up some like memory here in the console. It like sends off some code to yeah, run yeah, processing. Yeah. Yeah, I think what this is doing when you open up this window is it's like starting a remote interpreter on the ML box, and then when you execute selection in console, it like sends your code off to that process executes it, and then sends the result back to PyCharm where it displays it. And so you can like, you know, do little things like, okay, I don't know what range one of two is. I have a process running on the ML box with the environment set up. Execute selection and console, and it shows me the output of that. But that's not quite what I was looking for. I want to turn that into a list. Execute selection and console. Oh, good. It's just a list of one. So it's super helpful for like stepping through a bunch of stuff and just being like, what's train loader? You know? What's optimizer? Like, what if I did optimizer that add prime group? Like, what does that do? Stuff like that. That's like how I explore code. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's nice. Um, so I want to be able to get to a point where I can like maybe instead of fucking with the code here and running it in the console. It feels like it's going down there. Yeah, I want to be able to like initialize all these variables. <laughs> Um, and then come into train and just like have these variables in memory over in this process and like examine them. It's sort of like an IPython notebook a little bit. Um, but I'm running into errors like no CUDA is not defined. Okay, so I'm going to just run all of this file. And now I'm like no module name transformer. Let's just run this and see what happens. Okay, so. Why does it not know what the file is there though? Aren't you in the repo? I'm gonna 
Uh, yeah, so I think it's like some Python import trickery, like okay. just starting up a new project, you get these kinds of dumb errors. And on this case, not working. Yeah, I don't think this code's gonna work because it needs that thing function from that other file then. That's trade data letters in the Yugo file. Yeah, and this doesn't know where that is. Transform for you. But here it is. So create data loaders. I can just like just copy it, yeah. get this guy. But this guy's running for a long time, I'm not sure why. Okay, so I just ran all of these function definitions, okay. and it worked. Cool. So now it now knows all this stuff. So now it knows all this stuff. So now you're going to rerun this file, right? Get rid of that um, import. And then down there, you're going to have to fix that. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, no, no, go back down. Ah, Get yes. rid of the angle there. Yeah. And then I can scan around for other errors in this file. Uh, I think really you errors. should be fine. In that red error down there is fine, because you should have it inside that. Already, right? yeah. Cool. Here. Now, one thing that's usage pydiv console attention point. What is this? Pydiv console that py unrecognized arguments mode server. Just crash your console. What? Mode equals server. I think it's like executing. There's actual code up here that's like executing, and I bet it's like CUDA related or something. Oh yeah, I think it is. Because I think we should. There's some stuff in what we did. Actually, Pressure parse args? What is that? Is it for when you run this file? It's for the command letter rights. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this process was started as pydevconsole.py with some other set of arguments. And now we're trying to do parser.add argument attentional pooling, right? And it's like, I don't know what that means. So we don't need any of these attentional pooling. Let's just make this our thing. I think that's fine. Okay. And now that those are turned off, maybe this will work. I remember it's you always. I'm going to get everything from here up. I'm going to come here. I'm going to get everything from here up. And it works. OK. Cool. So now we should have, we should be able to run this stuff. Let's just start here. Let's just start here. If you don't highlight anything, all right, so use code is now true. Cool. Torch manual seed. OK, that returned that. Device, I wonder what the device will be. Device is indeed CUDA. Okay. That's sick. Instantiate a transformer. Put it on the device. Okay, so that took a little while. That's interesting. But now we have this thing. <coughs> and we can examine it. Okay. We have an optimizer. Look at that. AMS grad. Those are interesting parameters. Train loader. Permission denied data. So this is another error that we ran to earlier. Um, Oh, because it does it expect you to have the file, or like you're supposed to be getting it? But uh, this is the yeah. Stuff, right? I don't think I have a data folder in here. Shouldn't be an error. What would the error be? No such file or directory. I mean, look, but I wouldn't have it expected. What is that? What is that? That's probably true. You just log the CDN that, right? So I need to create data loaders. Does this thing not just get MNIST? Train loader, data, data loader, MNIST. Data sets, MNIST. OK, so maybe it's like I can't create the file. Why? So here at the definition of MNIST, I think what it's going to, what it wants to do is download these and then create them. Is that what the line exploded at?
Yeah, it's split at this one. Yeah, so down the down true. true. So, how was it running earlier? Do you look at your data folder? Your ls this. Do ls this lih. Is there no data folder? Yeah. What about data? Okay, so data is a thing. Um, it belongs to ls me. Uh, it belongs to. And I'm pushing an idea. Who does the process belong to? It should belong to you also. Yeah. And... Okay. Where are we? Oh, well, that's a problem. I, does this work? <laughs> <laughs> I think what this does is spawns a subshell, but yeah, it's not going to change like your current process within directory. Um, so you'd have to start PyCharm in that directory, or so this start your interactive process in that directory, or change your code. How does the interact? Uh, Wait, is it with the relative directory from from the code from where the code lives, or from where the process got started? It must be where the process is running. I think relative paths are like problematic in general. Like, is it possible to pass in the data here? Can you just use an absolute path? Yeah, so we should just, yeah, let's use an absolute path. So what we're going to change these to instead is, uh, is the data in here? Or is it in here? JSON code data. Is that really it? Seems like it, right? Jan 20? That was like 10 days ago. I don't know. Oh, this what? might be like some different data. Train images, T10K? Uh, what is that? Let's rethink. Yeah, that seems wrong. <laughs> yeah, I think we just actually need to run. I'm gonna put this in admin, and I'm just gonna run this stuff right here, right now. Think this is gonna work? Yes. Name transforms not defined. <laughs> oh. oh right, because I gotta do this this guy. Okay, run that. Run that. It's working. <laughs> what did you do? I just changed them to absolute pass, and I'm running them now manually yes. here. Yeah. Syntax said return outside function. Fine. Okay, now we have data loaders. PyCharm is cool, right? Yeah. yeah. I remember the last time you showed it to me, I thought it was cool. I just haven't taken the link. All right, so now we can go into. Oh, there's a test function here. So now we're going to train. Model dot train. We want to be in. Is that one module? So, model dot train returned model. Unclear what it did. God, we can see what the thing is. So, so what is that? What is it? Yeah. Let me figure out the shapes. Okay, fine. Okay. 
looking at the script all the time. Okay, so now we have Is this thing a tensor? Can we do shape on it? It's a list. Still a list. What is the length of the zero element two? Okay, so what is this thing again? It's two tensors nested inside of it. Okay, so it's all one thing, yeah. So I think we have did this yeah, and so. this. So is it a hundred? We have a hundred zeros. That could be a. So I, I might have fucked up like the uh, when I uncommented this. Where's the trailer sitting? Didn't change it. Uh, Iterator line properly, but this is what's coming from train loader. So train loader is loading from. That doesn't seem to make sense. This shouldn't x be like non zeros until we. Oh, actually, no, you're printing the x mask, right? But no, actually, what, what the hell are you doing? Okay, so if we do this, I suspect that I fucked up like the. this bit, like the deconstructing and. So if I just did this, what have I changed? Are you trying? Uh, I'm gonna revert all the changes I made to this part of the code. This bit. Okay. What did it look like before? Look like that. Yeah. Okay. Let's let it iterate through all the data. And then by the end of this, we'll still have memory of whatever this was, and whatever this was, and even whatever this was. So x is actually a tensor. Batch index is 599. And then this tensor we are actually discarding. Right. Which is odd. Okay. X masked is like so. That's X, X masked. Yeah, I wonder. If, there's got to be a way to like. It's all zeros. Is everything is masked. No, it's not. Oh, there's, there's a lot of eights. There's a lot of stuff. Yeah, those are eights, and there's oh, more stuff there's inside of it. That we can't see. Okay, there we go. Um. I wonder what this would be. Output's not defined. Close. Flag's not fine. Oh, that's something you commented out in your file. Flags. Flags equal partial partials. Okay, so it needs some flags, huh? If flags intentional pulling. Okay, flags equals. I know we have simple object in source What's what's the way to make like a thing? All right, whatever. What are you trying to? Do? Yeah, what are you trying to do? Uh, I want to make like a tensional pooling. I guess I have to do property to tensional pooling. Okay, so now if we did flags dot attentional point, this is going to correctly return a thing. <laughs> um, although I want it to return true, and it's not. What is it return? Oh, you get to call it. Is it like a class property? Actually, here, we'll do it like this. Now if we did this, now it's working. That, oh really? You don't have to invoke it anymore as a function? Uh, well, because I put it on the property, you don't have to invoke okay. it. So that's kind of janky. Um, Alright, so now we have flags. So we have that. Output. 
Size of tensor 197 must match size of tensor B. It should be 186, right? So what? Which one does it think it's 197? Uh, so, output equals model of x, x mask. Model again. Models. Model is. What does it mean to invoke a model that the forward pass? That must be what it is. Yeah, it's forward pass. It's forward pass, huh? Why wouldn't they just call forward pass on it? That's weird. Do we get the same error if we do this? Yeah. Interesting. It's like an odd um, sugar that. What is what is the shape of X max? Uh, X max shape is 100 and 196. Okay. And then what's in your model? Is your model thinking 197 somewhere? So this is the error line. So x embed of x, self dot positional embedding. Right, I'll put the shape to this. Yeah, let's go into forward. So, a, so a, I'm assuming is that going to be the first one, self dot x embed x? Is that a reasonable assumption? I think so. X equals self dot embed x. So let's make self equals model. Okay, so go back to transformer. X equals perspective. So one is towards CUDA long time, so the other is towards long time, so we need to move it to CUDA, right? That's a different error. Yeah, am I on the right forward? There's so many. Um, What's the model that we are? This doesn't look like the right forward. Go, go to the where you assign the model variable and see what. Uh, Isn't it the transformer model? Yeah, it's model equals transformer. So if yeah, I go so through it to forward, forward, it's this. Mm -hmm. um, is it really the case that when I when you just invoke it, you're calling forward? I'm pretty sure. You can look at one with the module. It did throw the same arrow when we did forward versus not forward. Forward versus not forward. I'm the errors within there. I can't change the, like, I can't, like, scroll up in the file. Every time you move the cursor, that like, brings you back down. You need to um, stop following me. Unfollow you? Yeah. yeah. You'll still get my changes and stuff. You just won't, like, track me around. Okay. Be right back. All right, so... Is there anyone who can just step through this, like, for, like the debugger here? That would work. Oh, this document is read only. Oh, you don't have write access. Jason. Yeah, just literally just shove a debugger in the foreign function, is what I was going to say. You don't just like put I PDB and then set trace and let's see what happens. Yeah, but I don't know if I can like run this. Oh, yeah, I think so. But at least add the debugger there, which I think is going to make sense. I'm not 
What are you looking at? I'm trying to look at the match of the line numbers. So it's like one line 167 and forward embedded equals X. I'm trying to remember that is. Uh, is it not literally under transformer? Embedded. It's, it's under embedded Embed positional yeah. bias. I can't edit this file, by the way. Can you make me, uh, give me right access? Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, jeez. Does it oh, say that you don't have right access? Yeah. Okay. Are you going to stick a, a, a debugger somewhere? Yeah. Great. Okay. Tools. Blue bits. Join workspace by URL. Or just literally stick a, you could do it. Just stick the, uh, I was going to do IP give me set trace in the Lord. forward function with under embed with positional bias. Uh, no, I want to make you. That's not a thing you show on a stream. It says this document is read only. That's weird. Summon everyone to current cursor location. Okay, there's chat. Yeah. Can mm. update or yeah. Can I start it? Share your code. Share. Join. To this window. Edit permissions. View. Edit, administer. Cool. All right. All right, cool. That's all I want to do. Oh, that's way better. Mm -hmm. I had no idea you guys couldn't. Oh, now I can see you guys moving around, too. All right, cool. This is sick. This is what I love. <laughs> all right, run again, Jason. <laughs> Time to run. Uh, rsync. Let me go back to the directory. And... Generative train. Oh, I changed up the. Uh, I commented about utils, etc. What do you guys want to do lunch, by the way? Mm, not super hungry because I ate all this before. Yeah, I ate before I came over. Um, right, I found the spot. Utils. Well, I haven't eaten. Alright, but the thing that I'm confused about is this forward. It does go to, or I guess it doesn't actually know which one it is. What, what, what is it? I was trying to figure out which. It's for the transformer forward. Okay. So the truth, I put. The transformer called call embed forward, which is a trans, which is a positional embedding. Yeah, so, so I put a trace embedded, here. But shouldn't I put it before this? Uh, this is your positional embedding? Yeah. Um, go up. Um, oh, that is definitely spot. it before I even get into here? It breaks on line 175. Oh, okay. Never mind. We're good. Utils is not defined, why not? The transformer import util, it is util, not utils. Okay. Whatever you still util. <laughs> One. <laughs> A single util. Alright. So, IPDB. So, there's like. Where? Or who's? I'm trying to see where you are. Should I do C? Yeah, I was trying to see where I was. Okay, we hit the error. So I guess. Can you see where the shader X is? Yeah, run that again. Self embed X, or X embed. Well, X dot shape. Okay. So. Now self dot X underscore embed. X dot shape. Embed. Uh, invoke with X. Uh, Oops. 
Okay, that seems fine also. Yeah, and then look at the... Uh, What's self.positional embed? Yeah. Okay. Self.positional embed. Where is that? Uh, plus, like, down right there. Below, 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 below. Oh, wait, we do... Oh, that one. one. The one plus 73, we added dimension. Oh, that's true, too. Or we, we do a concat with dimension is equal to 1. Yeah, what the hell is that? Concat. Plus, we're going to put CUDA. We should mutate X. This is a thing. And then this is a thing. This is only really CUDA to 100 by 1. That's easy to find, also. Okay. What, what happens when okay, we mutate X we and one? then we call that underscore or embed function? It was the shape of that. Oh. Ooh. That? So is it's because you're adding a dimension? Wait, classify so torch dot cat cat is just like a cat A, right? Right. This is the classifier input. Uh is it all eights? Okay, so what what is it trying to do here? Include an input with a special value. This thing only happens if we have flags that attentional pooling turned on. So what is attentional pooling? Oh. So is the attentional pooling, is this... Actually... Default is false. Let's run this again without attentional pooling, because I had it turned on. All right, read back if you want to start. We still get the same error. Oh, well, I forgot the rsync again. Should really make this rsync process automatic. Okay, now it works. <laughs> it's just intentional pulling that was messing us up. Whatever that is, it's not working. Okay. Not you that. Well. Seems like the debug flow is faster for this particular thing for understanding what's going to go on. I'm walking it through like PyCharm Charger style. All right, what else do you guys want to understand? Um. So our goal is to output a pixel instead of a class. Yeah. Or a, a prediction for pixel, right? Mm -hmm. Are we already doing that? I don't think so. Are we still just um, outputting the class? Optimizer <laughs> step. Pred equals output. I want to see this. Doing this right? Yeah. Set trace, right and train, R sync, and run generative train. See you next Oh, because it runs. It runs train here, but it does. It does, there's like maybe the train is what it was doing right then. 
that is what it's doing, but like, so, but don't you need the model? Oh, it does a test first. See, it does a whole test run here. So that first line here, this is it testing. So just comment that I don't actually need that, right? Yeah, we just want to go straight to train. So now if I run it, it should go immediately to the IPDB. Oh, oh. No. I are sync. <laughs> Why don't you just run that in a while loop every, every sleep time. every second or something? There we go. Sorry? You just run that in a while loop and sleep every second or something. Like run, sleep, run. Uh, uh, all true. Or no, it's a... What's that? All true, semicolon, do... Oh, yeah, yeah, do your, echo your high. Thing. Yeah, semicolon done. Yeah, there you go. Okay, how about... One. Yeah. Nice, thank you. All true to sleep one done. Yeah. Should we like print something as well? Echo syncing. Cool. Yeah. Dope. Dash. All right. Bash. All right, so uh, IPDB, I wanted to see what, okay, so output, we have an output here, and we want to find the max of one keep dim true. What do we think that this does? Is it a max of like many dimensions, or? So do we think that we're going to get 100 maxes, 10 maxes, or 1 max? Uh, did you get 100? Keep them true. Yeah, what's that? I bet 100 is right. So tuple. Is this the thing that you can do? There's one element times this. OK, well, we have. 3 comma 1, 100 comma 1. So yeah, I think you're right. James. I'll that shit. Yeah, that looks like, more, that's more than 10, so it's probably 100. Okay, so then... So for every one of these rows, it found a 3. I don't see any 3s in there. <laughs> How are you understanding what this is saying? I'll like say that again. So I don't understand what it's doing. So this is just a bunch of softmax outputs, and it's like give me the max of all of these. Oh, is it? Is it give you the max index? So then you're getting a bunch of threes because then it means the max index. Is oh, three. maybe. Because you're trying to get the predictions, right? And you're going to pick the max of softmaxes, which should be an index, which is. Yeah. And then why pick out the one? Cool. So yeah, okay, so I think it returns the so there's two tensors here. The first tensor is the actual max, and the second tensor is the indexes, the corresponding indexes of these. Yeah, and you can see that for most it's like the third one and for some it's the second. So this is what is it predicting though? That that this is the index what index is this? So here for this one, for the very last one, mm -hmm. I think that the maximum value is here, minus 1.4, which is the third index. So indeed, this is uh, that value, and it's the third index. I wonder what the argument 1 does. What is the shape of the, uh, yeah, what is max? So both That's of these tensors are of the same shape. It's, yeah, so it's the max across the row, but it returns both the value and the index. It's very handy. Um, and I wonder what keep them. Is that false now? Mm -hmm. Wait, yeah. Oh, so keep them. There's an extra dimension here. Each of these are wrapped in their own one dimensional array. Yeah. Whereas here, it's sort of like. But then I, I that, wait. Like here, they're all unwrapped, and it's like one big flat array. 
or is here? There's still kept. Oh. I think it's the same arrays. So the information is still the same, you're just saying. Yeah, so this yeah. is gonna be a hundred comma one. Damn it. This is a hundred comma one? Oh, keep in true is a hundred comma one. But when yeah. you don't keep in dimensions, you're just like, I want a flat thing. Yeah. Perfect. Why would you keep the dimensions? Question for me is why would you keep the dimensions? So it's strictly hard to work with the hundred comma one. And then it looks like they take the first element of that. So if you have 100 elements that are each one dimensional, it takes the first element that is one dimensional. You mean this one? This yeah, part? Line 1, 2, 18. Well, well, so isn't that's like that... getting the indexes instead of the. Yeah, because isn't the first, first thing oh, just like the actual the values, right? Yeah. yeah. But that doesn't really mean that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now we have. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I got Hello! Hello! Yeah. No, no, come join. Whatever. Yeah. Come hang. A couple thousand followers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 just touring. Come on. Oh, hi. Oh, the Albrechts. Hi. Nice to meet you. What's going on? Come on. Yeah, come hang. Oh, wow. I'm Jason. Hi. 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 No, okay, so indexes of max for each of the 100. So what are these? So what is output again? Each of the 100. Output is, output is all the softmax. softmax. Yeah. So. It's a tensor of softmax predictions. And then we're going to get the highest index, which is our prediction. And then we're going to get the first element of that list, which is our indexes, and not the actual values. And then we're going to figure out how many we get correct. Yep. So y view as cred. So what is y? So these are the correct indices, huh? Looks like we got most of them wrong. <laughs> As you'd expect the first time. So y view as cred. Okay, so how do you just go, how do you advance one line? I don't know, actually. Step? Next. Next? There's, there's a step here, yeah. Okay. Josh, we're doing it. Neural nets. Yay. Transformers. Are you guys doing further with the transformer this week? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. It's slow going without time, but uh, <laughs> building on we'll your Yeah, we are. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So it just copies the shape. So why do we have to keep the why do we have to keep dims here? Why can't we just like do this and then cancel this? We'll try that. Uh, go back to that and undo that change here. So instead of y doing keep dim as... and then like changing the dimensions of y to equal, sorry, yeah, change the dimensions of y to equal pred, why don't we just throw both those things out? Yeah, why don't we just compare the pred yeah, to... Yeah, a flat list of 100 to a flat list of 100. Instead of a list of 100, one dimensional as, arrays. Yeah, what does view as do? View as changes the shape of y to match pred. So, but so it doesn't matter what it's... So y dot shape is flat 100 by default. But, they're so but when you do though. view as, you change it to match the shape of pred. So why don't you just flatten pred and then compare that or something? Yeah. That would seem more straightforward. Yeah. So I wonder, so correct is, oh, now correct has the same shape as well. Maybe you need correct to be in the shape. Why? Yeah, why? I don't know. But I wonder how many correct answers Ooh, you got. wait, I wonder if you, so after this. got two correct. <laughs> hey, it's, uh, but it's the first zero. time, right? <laughs> All right, but still, I'm kind of confused. So we are predicting, like, this is. Wait. Oh, wow, do you see this? That's such a gotcha. These are different shapes. Sum of correct and correct dot sum. Oh. One's in a ring that was scalar. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't think that would matter. It seems like they're just computing a fraction here to display the progress bar. So it didn't seem like whichever dimension you use would really be relevant. Yeah, probably not. View as is less intuitive to me than flatten, because flatten seems like I know what that does. So the, is the indices are predicted. What does that mean, though? Like, what is it? It's like, so there, there are in eight buckets of like 
pixels that we think they're going to be. And so it's like... Oh, it's so like, what, did we guess the bucket cart mode? Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. Okay. So then now on top of this, we want to be able to... Uh, I don't think that we have to change anything in here. Uh, this train looks okay to me. So also, I finally, I think I get why Tom said to bin things into eight values. Why? Why? Because we're going to get a lot more correct now. Yeah. If we had to guess the right one out of 255, it's very hard. you guess 147 and you say you get zero correct, the answer is 146, right? Oh, so it's not enough information? Like, because you would be approximately right if you guessed around. Yeah, it's it's like easier for the net to learn this yeah. by a lot. Is there a way you can like you like gradiate that? Like you know, yeah. like one forty five is going. more correct than like one hundred. Or like really like, like, training. I bet I bet we could I, I bet yeah. we could do that. Yeah, I bet we could build that. Or like even as you're training. Just do your loss function, right? Like you have to change. Yeah, it. instead of doing like all or nothing loss here. Yeah. Right. The loss metric would be like just, you almost got yeah. it. But like how close for you to the real thing. Yeah, it's like you, you the predicted minus the actual like you do some like mean squared error based on that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it, do, it does seem like rather coarse grain to like do eight buckets when you have two hundred and fifty six. Right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's what I'm Because, <laughs> like generate like well especially if our like overall end task is to generate an end this like <laughs> yeah. image. I guess we're just gonna generate really chunky. <laughs> well yeah, this is black and white too, it's like it's gonna be like zero a lot of the time or that's like true. so it probably matters less than for like a color picture with like a lot of resolution. <laughs> yeah. I guess yeah, I forgot these images are that literally like yeah. <laughs> black and white. <laughs> um so it's it's one thirty five and we got a way better streaming setup than we've had before. We stepped through train. We also got like a good collaborating setup. Yeah. This is like a lot better than co collab. It's good, yeah, for yeah. sure. I like We can like see what each other's doing, we got like yeah. a single table. We could easily go to the whiteboard. It's pretty legit. I, li I think we got we did a lot of good things in this session. Yeah. yeah. Um, we could keep going. I want to stop for lunch. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. I don't want to spend too much time because I'm like I have a bunch of stuff to do later today. But yeah. yeah. I have other stuff I want to do too. So we could call it for today and like yeah. call it like a big win. I think we did a lot today. Um, yeah. I wish we could just keep all this stuff here. Yeah, this is like a cool setup. Please do not touch. <laughs> <laughs> Paper club Sundays for two hours. <laughs> yeah. Business team, the yeah. socialist business team hangs out here and works on this area. Yeah. Why, why don't they, they should want to have this desk like this. It's so much better. Yeah. This is a great way to use that closet, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, Tiger could easily hop in on this, too. Yeah. It's a lot better for him to see. Yeah. Um, Right, because he could just be in the Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. On another screen, even. And then. I can blue with the I guess the only thing is that we can't connect to your terminal. I guess. Is that on the. If it's on the ML box, you could. We could technically all SSH. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's. You're right. We, uh, that's what we should do. Okay, wait. Can we set that up? <laughs> can we set that up? No, no. I'm serious. Are to the All right. Um, <laughs> wait, we need to have a new user that's like key club or something. Yeah, because I don't want to mess up your stuff. Yeah, I don't want to mess up anyone else's stuff. Okay, I'm going to set this up for next time, but next time we'll have a P club user. We'll all be able to SSH in. We'll be able to use the same T-Mug session. And we'll have all of our repos in there in a shared P club thing. That's perfect. That sounds good. I'm gonna clean up my. Can we add some like more layers of indirections so that? <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Alright, I'm gonna read up on this broadcast. So.